Reactive forms in Angular provide a great way to keep your form data consistent with the objects in your component class via the power of observable streams. We will take a look at how we can use reactive forms to build complex form logic in Angular applications. And you will see that with reactive forms, it's not hard at all to create the form you need and even do things like validation or watching inputs for changes. Let's get into it. So we're starting out with a new Angular application and we go ahead and remove all the default contents of the app component. To work with reactive forms, first of all, we need to make sure to import the reactive forms module in our app module. We do not need the basic forms module that you might know if you've worked with template driven forms before. Back in our component, we create something called a form group called my form, which will contain all of our forms controls. We can simply add the controls with their names as keys that are associated with form control objects. We call them city and zip code. We can initialize their values to empty strings by just passing them in their constructors. Then in our template, we create a form element and link it to our form group via the form group property. Inside the form, we create two diffs with input elements inside of them. The inputs get a form control name property with the names that we gave to the controls in the component. So these names have to match the keys inside our form group definition object. At the bottom, we also add a submit button. This form would be pretty useless so far, so we add a submit form method that logs the value of our myform form group. For that, we can just use the value property. Back in the template, we can bind the submit form method to the submit event of our form. And as you can see, when we fill out our form and click submit, the value of the form is a nice little object with our familiar keys, city and zip code. Sometimes it can be helpful to have the form control objects available directly to our template instead of just referencing them through the form control name property. So we create these two variables here at the top and use them in the form group. Instead of the form control name property, we can then use form control and pass in the control objects we just created. You might prefer this option because it helps you catch errors at compile time, because now you're actually referencing a variable from the template instead of just passing a string. Also, you often want to access properties of the control objects from within the template. For example, we can display the control's current value using the same value property we used earlier in the form group. We we'll put it here below the input element. And when we now type stuff into our controls input, we see the output below it update live as we type. This is because form controls use observables internally, and it's actually why reactive forms are called reactive forms. Another common pattern is to have getters for your control objects. We could move the form control in here, and in our component class, we add a getter like this using the formgroup.get method to access a control by name. Since you have to pass a string to this method, it's not guaranteed to return a value, which makes this a little less type safe. So we're going to leave it for now and revert back to what we had before. But there are more properties on a form control object than just value. Let's inspect some of those properties for our city control in a little table we create below the input. You can see that apart from value, the properties we want to investigate are called touched, untouched, dirty, and pristine. Starting out with a reloaded page, our city control is marked as untouched and pristine, but not as touched or dirty, unsurprisingly. But what's the difference between those? Well, let's click into our city control to give it focus. Then click outside of it so it loses focus. And as you can see, now the values for touched and untouched get swapped around. Touched and untouched are always exact opposites of each other, the same way that pristine and dirty are exact opposites. Only if we interact with the control by changing its value, it also becomes dirty, even if we remove the value afterwards. Also, the values for touched and untouched are only updated on blur while the values for pristine and dirty update live as we type. We can change this behavior inside the form control constructor with a second parameter, where we pass an object with an update on property set to blur. When we now type something into our control, you can see that the values in the table do not update live. 
All of them only change once the control's input element loses focus. The other possible values for update on are change, which is the default that produces the behavior we saw before, and submit, meaning the properties of the control are only updated when the form is submitted. We will stick with the default update on change for now. When dealing with user input, you quickly arrive at the point where you want to validate the values before sending them to your server. Angular and reactive forms have got you covered. A form control has a property called valid that tracks its validity state. Let's add a row inside our table for it. To define what counts as a valid input to a form control, we use the validators property in our second parameter to the form control constructor. The simplest validator we can add is the required validator. For the control to be valid, it just has to be non-empty. Let's see this in action. Starting out with an empty city input, the control is marked as invalid. As soon as we enter a value, it becomes valid, and when we empty it again, it's not valid anymore. Another built-in validator we can use is min length. As you can probably guess, it validates if the control's input has at least as many characters as the number that you pass in here indicates. When we now type something in, we can see how the control only becomes valid when we enter at least five characters. There is also a property for asynchronous validators that can be used if you need to make an API call in your validator. Of course, you can write custom validation functions, but those are a topic for another video. We can even take this one step further and get a handle of all errors that cause our validation to fail. Let's access the errors property of the city control to display them in our template. We're using the JSON pipe to make the object readable. The page now greets us with an error message right away, complaining that the city input is required. When we enter the first few characters, the error disappears, but another one pops up because the min length validator is also still active. Only after we enter at least five characters, the error property is empty and our field becomes valid. In a real-world application, you could utilize this errors property to display descriptive error messages inside your forms. But it is often a good idea to suppress these messages until the control has been marked as touched or dirty, so that errors are only shown to the user after they have had a chance to actually modify the input value. Another thing you might want in your forms is to prevent them from being submitted while they are in an invalid state. We can achieve this quite easily by disabling the submit button as long as the form is not valid. We use the disabled attribute for that. Now we cannot submit our form unless we type a long enough city name. Not only can we not use the button, also the enter key will not cause a submit event while the button is disabled. Notice how I didn't just use the validity status of the city control in the button's disable condition, but that of the entire form object. This works because with reactive forms, forms are composite structures. A form group, like our myForm, can have form controls or even other form groups as children. And as soon as one of those children is marked as invalid or touched or dirty, the parent form group will also be marked as touched, invalid or dirty. The entire hierarchy of classes that make up reactive forms looks like this with a common base class called abstract control, which is extended by our familiar classes form control and form group. The form group has a controls property containing all of its child controls. There is one more child class we haven't seen so far called form array, which is used to handle a variable number of inputs under the same key. We'll see them in action in a minute. Because of the composite structure of controls, it is not only possible to attach validators to form controls, but to form groups and form arrays too. This is sometimes helpful when several controls in a group need to be evaluated together in order to determine whether the form should be valid or not. Alright, let's make use of this new knowledge and restructure our form a bit. First, we will create a form group within the existing form group called address and move our city and zip code controls inside that. Also, we will add a form array to our form called emails. However, creating form elements this way can be a bit cumbersome. And in fact, Angular provides some syntactic sugar for this via the form builder service. Let's rewrite our form using the form builder. First, we need to inject the service in the components constructor. 
Then inside the constructor we initialize our form by calling the group method. We keep our address group, but also use form builder to create it. And then let's also create the city and zip code controls in here using form builder's control method. We'll just copy over the validator configuration into the second parameter here. Our emails form array can also be created with form builder using the array method. And we'll initialize it with an empty list for now. We will add controls inside this array in a minute. First, we need to adapt our template a little. Since we removed the control instances from our component class, we cannot use them directly anymore within the template. Let's quickly remove the table and the diff that shows our errors. We won't need those anymore. Because the city control and zip code control variables don't exist anymore, we will change these to using form control name. But there is a catch, since city and zip code are now nested one level deeper inside a new form group called address, we also need to reflect this hierarchy in our template. So let's wrap these two divs inside a container element. And then we need to give that new element an attribute form group name and pass in our address name. And as you can see, our form still works the same as before. And we still need to enter at least five characters in the city input for the submit button to become enabled. Now let's add a possibility for the user to interact with our emails form array. First off, we will need a getter for the array and we need to include a typecast to be able to loop over the array in the template. In the template, let's create a second section. This time we'll pass a form array name into it with our emails key. Our goal is to enable the user to enter an arbitrary number of email addresses. So our form array can hold an arbitrary number of controls. We create a diff element here with an ng4 over all controls inside the emails array. Notice how we also track the loop index, because we need to pass that as the form control name to the input element inside the diff. So far our form array is still empty and we will never see any inputs for email addresses. We need a way to add a control to the array. Let's lay the groundwork for that by creating two methods in our component class. To add a new control, we will use the formArray.push method to push a new form control into our array. Each of these controls will get an email validator and it will be marked as required. Then in remove email, we get passed in the index of the control to be removed and can then just pass that index on to the very convenient formArray.removeAdd method. As easy as that. In the template, Right next to the input element, we add a button that will call our remove email method on click. Again, we pass in the index so that method knows which control inside the array to remove. Underneath the whole section, we create a button to add an email control. It will call the add email method on click. And let's also disable this button when our emails array is invalid. So the user will only be allowed to add a second email control when the first email address they entered was valid. All right, let's see this in action. When we enter a city name with at least five characters, you see that the entire form is considered valid as the submit button becomes enabled. As soon as we click our add email button, a new empty control appears and the form is considered invalid because that new control is considered required. Let's enter a valid email address here and voila, the submit button is happy again. When we click add email again, the same thing happens. If a new control is there, it needs a valid input and the validity state of each of these dynamically added controls propagates up to our parent form group. We can also remove these controls at any time using our remove button. Last but not least, let's look a bit more into how we can interact with our form controls programmatically. First, let's create a getter for our city control, because that's the object we want to investigate first. Remember, we need to use get on our my form to get the address group and then use get again to get our control inside that subgroup. Next, we will implement the onInit interface and add an ngOnInit method to our class. And inside of here, we will subscribe to the citycontrol.valueChanges observable that will emit the latest value for the control every time it changes. And we will just log that value to the console. As you can see, this will just lock the string value of our city input on every keystroke. We can subscribe to changes of every control in our form group or even the entire group itself. Let's change the subscription to my form instead of city control. 
Now as you can see we get an object representing our entire form locked to the console every time we change some input. This is all thanks to the uniform interface across all abstract control subclasses. And it's a real strong point of reactive forms in Angular. Of course we can't just listen to changes of controls, we can also actively change their values. Let's change the subscription back to our city control for simplicity, and then let's add a call to citycontrol.setValue down here. We are wrapping it inside a set timeout so we can really see it happening. When we reload our page, after 3 seconds we see the input value change. And we also see in the console that this change also triggers our value changes subscription. Often you don't want your programmatic value changes to trigger the value changes observable because this might interfere with your application's logic. To achieve this, we can simply add a second parameter to the set value call. We give it an object with emit event false in here. Now you see the input still gets the new value, but the console stays empty, because that change event didn't cause the value changes observable to emit. I'm sure you have guessed by now that we can't only set values of simple form controls, but also pass values for entire form groups, and you're right. Let's remove this stuff inside ng-on-init and add a call to set the value of our myForm. We need to pass in an object with the same keys as in the form group's definition. So we need an address key that itself contains an object with city and zip code. For the emails key we will just pass an empty array. As you can see, our form is now pre-filled with values on reload. This is often what you want when you need to display a form to edit an existing entry to the user. In such an edit mode scenario, you might also want to include a check for whether the form values have actually changed before enabling the submit button. Of course this and many other real world requirements are a piece of cake to achieve with reactive forms and Angular. But this should be enough for this video. I hope you enjoyed this quick overview of reactive forms. Go ahead and try it out yourselves and create your own forms with it. With form controls you're not limited to HTML input elements but you can even write your own Angular components that can be used as form controls with all the features that you saw in this video. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in that, and maybe I'll make a video about it. Alright everyone, don't forget to like and subscribe, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.